In this tutorial, I'll show you how to connect cylinders and a cube to the bones of an armature, and I'll show you how to add constraints to make posing a figure easier. The starting point for this tutorial is the file made in the previous tutorial. You can make the file yourself or download it from my website. An armature has an additional mode called Pose Mode for posing the character. Selecting a bone and pressing G for grab, I can pose the bone, but at the moment the cylinder is not connected to the bone. The easiest way of connecting the cylinder to the bone is to make the bone the parent of the cylinder. Then wherever the parent bone goes, the child cylinder will follow. Select the cylinder, hold down shift, select the bone, hold down control, press P, and to make the bone the parent, click bone. Now when I press G for grab, the cylinder is connected to the bone. In the outliner window, we can select the body parts, the head, the lower arm, select the body, and I want to connect it to the backbone, hold down shift, click the bone, hold down control, press P, and click bone. We now can't see the body in the outliner window, but it is still there. If we click the plus of the armature, the body is now a subpart of the armature with the backbone as its parent. Select the neck cylinder, hold down shift and select the neck bone. You may need to zoom in. Hold down control, press P and click bone. I'm going to work down the list. Select the head, hold down shift, select the head bone, control and P and click bone. I have jumped ahead and just have the last two body parts to connect. Select the body part, hold down shift, select the bone, hold down control, press P and click bone. Select, shift select, control and P and bone. The backbone is called the root bone because it doesn't have a parent. All the other bones are either its children or its grandchildren. If I press G for grab and move the backbone, all the other bones move with it. If I select the upper arm and press G for grab, its parent, the backbone, doesn't move, but its child, the lower arm, does. If I select the lower arm and press G for grab, its parent, the upper arm, does not move. To reset a pose, in the Pose menu, clear transform, reset. So at the moment, to pose the arm, I first have to place the upper arm and then place the lower arm. It would be nice to be able to just place the lower arm and let the computer work out where the upper arm should go, the reverse or inverse of the process. Well, you can do just that using a bone constraint called inverse kinematics. Click the bone constraints button, click the add bone constraint button, Click Inverse Kinematics and set the chain length to 2 for the two bones in the arm. Pressing G for grab, the inverse happens. The parent, the upper arm, follows the child. In the View menu, toggle Quad View. At the moment, the elbow joint is free to bend backwards as well as forwards we can constrain it so that it only bends forwards. Click the Bone Properties button, scroll down, click the black triangle to open up the Inverse Kinematics panel, scroll down, Lock X and Limit Z. And at the moment we've got the full 360 degrees of freedom. Change the 180 to 0 and now the elbow can only bend forwards. To help the elbow bend forwards, I'm going to put a small kink in the joint. Go into edit mode, select the joint, press G for grab, Y for the Y direction, 
point zero five and enter. Go back into pose mode. Now when we move the lower arm we should get a reasonably natural arm bend. We need to add the constraints to the other arm. Select the lower arm, click the bone constraints button, click the add bone constraint button, click inverse kinematics and set the chain length to 2. Click the bone properties button, lock X, limit Z and this time set the minus 180 to 0. Next the legs, go into edit mode, select the knee joint, press G for grab, Y for the Y direction, minus 0 0.05 and enter. Go into pose mode, select the lower leg, click the bone constraints button, click the add bone constraint button, click inverse kinematics and set the chain length to 2. Click the bone properties button, scroll down, lock Z, limit X and set the minus 180 to 0. Now the knee will only bend backwards. Select the other lower leg, click the bone constraints button, click the add bone constraint button, click inverse kinematics, set the chain length to 2, click the bone properties button, lock Z, limit X and set the minus 180 to 0. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the start file and the end file for you to download at my website. If you'd like to subscribe, click the stickman. Thanks for watching and goodbye.